Sigma Tiger News all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online today. Well, guess what? We got a women's weightlifting world record. Nope, national record, sorry. Uh, Jesus turns his cheek, as he always does. Dolly sucks, and migrants are great. Don't you forget it. <laughs> All up in your grill, hottest, juiciest beef. So what is it? It's the news, and we got some hot takes. What's going on here? Let's have a look. We got a new world record uh, for women's weightlifting in Reno, Nevada. 95 kilos. 95 kilos. First attempt. There you go, uh, Vicky Piper. Uh, okay, okay, that makes more sense. Transgender competitor wins women's national weightlifting competition. So, uh, new record. Transgender weightlifter won the Masters National Weightlifting Championship in Reno, Nevada on March 24th. Uh, they came in first in the women's 76 kilogram weight category. Vicky Piper, 57, beat the second place finisher with a 127, 17 ahead of Krista Dornbush. Uh, during the event, Piper lifted 56 kilograms, 123 pounds in the snatch, and 71 kilograms in the clean and jerk. Meanwhile, Dornbush lifted 46 kilograms in the snatch and 64 kilograms in the clean and jerk. Piper celebrated uh, the big win, saying it was the first championship contest they had won. Thank you, USA Weightlifting, for hosting such a well-thought-out and supportive event here in Reno, Nevada, Piper wrote on Instagram. USA Weightlifting recently enacted rules to allow transgender uh, athletes, if they show evidence of undergoing hormone therapy for at least two years, to minimize gender-related competition advantages. Just to minimize them. You can never eliminate them. Video one of Piper's events shows how easily they perform the feat. Uh, they won the 55 and over age category. So they towered over the uh, uh, opponents. And there you go. We got an update on the girl who uh, got into a fight and another girl uh, ragdolled her into the concrete, sending her into a coma. Well, apparently uh, Kaylee Gain, the victim, was suspended from school for fighting a day before being beaten into the concrete. Um, let's go ahead and have a look. Missouri high school student Kaylee Gain was suspended from school for fighting just a day before she was brutally beaten by another teen in a filmed brawl that went viral. Gain 16 was left in a coma for two weeks after the beating near Hazelwood East High in St. Louis, which saw a teen girl beating her head repeatedly into concrete. The day before the March 18th fight, Gain was suspended from school for fighting a different girl who was friends with the teen now charged in the incident, as reported by the New York Post. Uh, Gain and the girl who remains in juvenile detention uh, were apparently members of warring friends groups in the high school. The accused girl's family previously told DailyMail.com that she is the real victim who was harassed and bullied before the viral incident and hit back at calls to charge the 15-year-old girl as an adult. There's an image of uh, the victim. Her super large jeans. <laughs> anyway, there is a, a still image of the victim on the ground before she was uh, rammed into it. And speaking out to DailyMail.com, the aunt of the girl arrested confirmed that she wasn't an honor roll student at Hazelwood East High School with an exemplary record and was defending herself during the fight with Kaylee. Oh, absolutely, totally defending herself. Um, the family has created a change.org petition calling um, on the St. Louis Juvenile Court to show compassion to the school girl. For, like, if you haven't seen the video, like, you should watch it because it's absolutely inhumane. Like, the reaction of this person to the other individual like it looks like murder like it wasn't just like oh like this is just a girl defending herself defending herself would be not climbing on top in a mount position 
grabbing the person by the shoulders three separate times. Hearing the sound is like a watermelon hitting the ground. It was unbelievable. So uh, to me, she should be uh, charged 100% as an adult and be punished. Now, if they were fighting and warring as they uh, speak of, perhaps there's an investigation that needs to be done. And there's the victim on the ground as she began to seize after the assault. Uh, the funds we returned to, uh, yeah, so they set up a GoFundMe and it got shut down because, um, you can't, uh, fundraise the legal defense of an alleged violent crime. So there you have it. I'm trying to cash in on a beatdown and, uh, guess what? Too bad. You can't be at it. The firm Kaylee suffered a fractured skull that resulted in brain bleeding and swelling and she's still not regained consciousness 10 days later. Although the family would like justice to eventually be served through the legal system, their focus at this time is dedicated exclusively to Kaylee's recovery. And we wish her a speedy recovery. Absolutely. Pray for her. And the other one as well. Pray for the other child as well, that she will uh, get through her uh, test and trial and tribulation. Canada's need to improve productivity has reached emergency levels, says Bank of Canada official. Well, uh, we had Kevin O'Leary on the other day, and he was talking about... Uh, how uh, Trudeau is a complete idiot and his entire cabinet as well are a bunch of idiots because you can't get mining permits to do anything. He's talking about uh, the age of AI and data and how we need data centers and they're about three billion and they can't get those either because Stephen Gilbo will not hand out any sort of permits with regards to energy because carbon is death to that guy. Well, we lag on machinery, equipment, intellectual property investments, she said. Yeah, we lag on everything. You go on TikTok and or uh, Twitter and just type in Canadian food prices. One missus was like, uh, I walked into a store and guess what? A, a lady was like, hey, can you have any change? She's like, I don't carry change. I'm sorry, but I'll buy you something. So she went to go get her loaf of bread and it was $7 on sale. That's insane. Uh, another video I seen yesterday was a person going to buy a vegetable tray with those little tiny, uh, terribly uh, formed carrots that are bleached or chlorinated and then some chopped up old broccoli and maybe some chopped up cauliflower and some little cherry tomatoes, which is always the old produce that they put into those. It's not the fresh stuff. And it was $45. And then they had like a four quartered uh, fruit tray with like watermelon, grapes, and something else It was like $41. So I don't know what's going on in Canada, but uh, vote out Trudeau. That's it. It's eight years and this is where we are the pandemic's been over other countries aren't going through this level of inflation this level of housing crisis due to immigration they said over a million people came typically it's like 250,000 he wanted to increase it to 400,000 but a million came through last year and guess how many houses they're going to build 1800 that's going to solve all the problems so uh, it seems like the people in charge aren't realizing what's going on because they're rich. Most politicians get paid a nice sum and uh, people who have money and authority and power seek out more of that and they become politicians. And uh, yeah, so there you go. A lot of them are trying to get their pensions. So an economy with strong productivity can have faster growth, more jobs and higher wages with less risk of inflation. Yes, manufacturing is super important. Jobs, investment uh, in mining, uh, construction, removing... Um, regulation paper, red tape paperwork get rid of all of it productivity lag a long-standing challenge lagging productivity has been a long-standing challenge in canada says derek holt vice president and head of capital markets economics at scotia bank i think the bank of canada to their credit brought it to the very forefront of the public policy dialogue this morning by saying it's an emergency and it's urgent their words to address this uh, otherwise the ability to get inflation durably down to their two percent target is going to be a tough thing to accomplish yeah absolutely it's not going to happen Especially in Trudeau's giving out free tampons to everybody and free birth control and uh, free diabetes medication. And like, yeah, some people do need diabetes medication, but the majority of people develop diabetes from poor diets. Virginia County declares Transgender Day of Visibility on Easter this year. So there you have it. And Jesus, uh, instead of rolling over in his grave, because we all know he was resurrected, he is turning the other cheek, because that's what he advises you do anytime someone tries to slap you in the face. And here it is. What's going on here? Jamie Joseph is a writer who covers politics. So what's going on? Is this not even an article? Are we getting jacked up here? Okay, we're going to have to archive this. What's going on? So again, this is uh, happens sometimes. If you're trying to get an article and it's not available, go ahead and go to archive.is 
and go ahead and paste your uh, little search link in there and boom there you have it paywall abolished bingo a Virginia County unanimously voted to observe its Transgender Day of Visibility this year on Easter Sunday, a move some critics see as intentionally trying to offend Christians on the holiest of days. The Fairfax Board of Supervisors voted 9 to 0 in favor of proclamation this last week, sorry, with one board member, Republican Supervisor Patrick Harity, absent. Of course, yeah, he's like, I'm not showing up there. Uh, March 31st, when Easter occurs this year, is typically a date when TDOV is celebrated annually. According to LGBTQ plus advocates and organizers, Easter doesn't fall on the same day every year for Protestants and Catholics and can come as early as March 22nd or late as April 25th. Yeah, so they're right about that. But was it planned? Did it happen this year? Are they just doing it because or is it just happened to be? I think it's just a case of happened to be. Uh, I'm just very happy that we're recognizing a community that has too often been pushed into the shadows of celebrating yet another community with our diverse tapestry here in Fairfax County, Supervisor Jimmy Bierman, a Democrat, said during the vote. Bierman, one of the nine members who requested the proclamation, added the county wants to make sure that everybody who's part of our community feels welcomed, feels loved, and feels empowered. Sure. I just want to be a boy. Well, dress like one. You don't need to chop off your breasts. Um. Okay, Virginia Mom... At the Fairfax chapter, leader of the Independent Women's Network, a nonprofit organization, describes itself as a private online forum empowering conservative women to inspire, influence, and impact their communities. Called decision reprehensible. Uh, yeah, so there's something else here as well. Uh, talking about how many days they have for this. I think they have like 68 days, something like two months uh, in this county. Anyway, whatever. It's it's a whatever. Celebrate however you like. It's all good. You know, we're going to celebrate Easter. We're going to celebrate the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, the one true king. And guess what? You guys can celebrate your uh, decision to be whatever you like and perform sexually immoral acts. Go for it. Uh, Dally. Cargo ship suffered severe electrical problem while docked in Baltimore days prior to bridge collapse crash. That's how it suffered total power failure, loss of engine failure, port worker says. So yeah, uh, this boat has a long history. 2016, it rammed into a port um, over in Europe, I believe, and uh, they couldn't even get this thing going. You know what I mean? They said that the refrigerators were causing this uh, thing to short out. Uh, oh, right. Explain. Refrigerator boxes tripped breakers on board the ship several occasions, and mechanics had been trying to fix the issue. So yeah, they were basically just trying to get this thing out of the port. Just get it out of here. And it couldn't even make it. Couldn't even make it like half a kilometer out of the port. Severe electrical problems, total power failure, loss of engine power, everything. So why did they let it go? Well, they just wanted to get rid of it. But guess what? A whole bunch of stuff's going to happen because of this. Some people are saying, oh, black swan issue or terrorism. It's not, okay? It's incompetence. It's literally incompetence. Uh, they were The ship is a long history, and uh, it had a crew that was all Indian, apparently. So maybe there were some uh, communication barriers along the lines with stuff like that. But guess what? The thing crashed, and everyone's like, oh, it's a problem. No, it's stupid people doing stupid things. Like, they should have just said, this boat is no good, and towed it out, Okay? And then decommissioned it. That's what they should have done. Okay? Because it had problems in Chile just a couple of years back. So logistics companies are on the hook. Guess what? They're calling force majeure uh, to insurance so they don't have to be on the hook for millions of dollars. There's like 400,000 cars stuck at the port. What are they going to do? Uh, you know what I mean? So who's on the hook? That's the whole thing about international trade. Is it like uh, I own it when it gets put on the ship? Or do I own it when it gets taken off the ship? There's all kinds of logistical things like that. And this stuff's going to cost a fortune. So uh, prices are rising. Prices are going to rise. The Houthi attacks all over in the Red Sea. Shipping rates are rising. This is going to cause shipping rates to rise as well. Inflation. Boom. Houston Mayor John Whitmer, quote, unquote, we're broke. Texas will be asking you to chip in. Taxpayers should expect substantial rate and fee increases for at least the next five to ten years. <laughs> already overwhelmed with taxes and cost of living the government wants more you heard it straight from the mayor houston is broke on an annual basis we're spending somewhere between 150 million and 200 million more than is coming in 
very likely what we're looking at is going to be the voters this November to say, hey, here's the plan, here's what it's going to cost, and we're asking you to uh, uh, chip in and vote us back in so we can take more and more and more. But where's the money going? Where has it been going for the past couple of years? Houston? Isn't that in Texas? I mean, isn't there like a boatloads, truckloads, whatever you want to call it, of migrants coming up through up to 10,000 a day? Taxpayers should expect substantial rate increases for the next 5-10 years. We're in a little bit of a crisis, and we have to do this to try to see if we can rebound. Uh, one way or another, we're going to have to pay for it. And there he is there. Um, slick Rick. Whatever, buddy. Uh, so, not only in Houston, they're just blowing wads of cash. Uh, New York Governor Kathy Hochul is dumping $2.4 billion into migrant care, pushing state-funded housing and construction. Yeah, well, uh, guess what? Um, in New York, they're also handing out these debit cards to migrants. Only on a pilot project, okay? Like, And obviously, they're going to continue it. And you're only allowed to use it at the bodega or the grocery store or whatever like that. And uh, turns out, SNAPs, or whatever that thing is that the Americans get uh, when they uh, get their welfare or whatever, their food stamps, they change it all the time, SNAPs now. Well, they get like $8 or $7 or something like that a day. And guess what the migrants are getting? 12 Unbelievable. So go ahead, give them some way more money. So this is your taxpayer money that's going to fund these people who are illegally coming across. And like, no one has a problem with people looking for help, okay? There's people are looking for help all the time. And if you ask nicely and you look like you deserve it, you might receive it. But if you're literally like, imagine, instead of bums, uh, just like shaking their thing or making a sign, which is funny sometimes, great, good job. You put a little effort into it. Imagine instead of shaking their cup, they would come up to and grab you. And say, I need money. Well, that's what they're doing at the border. They're really walking across and saying, I'm going to take money from you because you're giving it away. That's why we're here. We heard that you're giving us stuff. You're going to give us stuff, so we're here. Well, guess what? The city has a higher rent by nearly $1,000 a month compared to the second highest city. Yeah, New York is totally uh, insane. So uh, the New York rent is $4,040 a month. Next closest, $3,220 for to rent New Jersey. From there, uh, the rest of the top five includes Boston, which rings 3000 San Francisco, 2950 and Miami, Florida, 2690 and uh, that's for nothing. So yeah, I mean, here's the truth. It's a big problem, and the people in government are failing, as they have been for like the past five years. And let's go ahead and look. The invasion continues. Just rolling up here. Zoom in. You might have missed it. But there's a boat, and there's a ton of people just rushing off of it onto the beach. Coast Guard out there doing nothing. So where is this exactly? Biden border invasion will be televised. Illegal immigrants break into the United States via Solana Beach in California. So there you go. Heads up. Uh, lock your doors. Hide your wife and kids. And, uh, yeah, so... <laughs> This is the funniest thing ever. So Japan accepts a record high 303 refugees in 2023. So what's going on over there? They're not broke, you know? They're not paying out of their ass for groceries. Everything's good in Japan. Wonder why. Except there's a couple of migrants that are defacing shrines and getting deported. Japan granted refugee status to a record high 303 people in 2023 as applicants more than tripled from the previous year following a recovery of inbound travel. The country's immigration agency said Tuesday. The total increased by 101, so yeah, 30% increase. Wow. Largest group at 237 was Afghans, many of whom were employees of the Japan International Cooperation Agency who fled Afghanistan after the Taliban regained control there. So yeah, they took in a bunch of Afghanis and then uh, 27 from uh, Myanmar. The number of applicants of refugee status in Japan surged to 13,800 people, marking the second highest figure on record after 19,629 people sought asylum in 2017. And they only give out like 200. In America, it's just like 10,000 a day. Come on in. All right, and that's a wrap for today. Thank you for joining Sigma Tiger. 10,000 likes or subs. The mask comes off. Sigma Tiger, signing out.